Don't stay up too late, okay? You've got your first day at school tomorrow. And no listening to those horror stories anymore. You know they give you nightmares. Sweet dreams. Love you. Frosty Nights, Chapter 1 Welcome, children, to a wonderful, magical, and yet grisly story that Old St. Nicholas never wanted you to know. This story takes us back a long, long time ago, when Old Nicholas still had flecks of ginger in his beard. We'll just call him by what everyone today know him as, Santa. We will start from the very beginning, when Santa was still scouring the world for the perfect place to build his workshop. He found none better than the North Pole, where magic seeped readily from the Earth. So much magic was there that Santa learned to use the magic in ways he had never dreamt. His body no longer grew old. He could slow time around him to a near-complete stop, and as long as he gathered enough magic, he knew he could travel the world in what to us was a single day. Even slowing time as he could, Santa quickly realized to make enough toys for every child in the world would take him far too long. So Santa placed his hands into the snow and called to Mother Nature herself for help. Mother Nature was gentle, as she was wild. She saw the kindness in Santa's heart and agreed to help by melding Santa's magic and Mother Nature's spirit into the snow itself. The first of the snowmen bubbled up from the ground like liquid snow, yet unmoving and lifeless just as the snowman we know today. Mother Nature seemed to pause before then placing a carrot for its nose you see, everything that is alive requires a small part of life to begin with. The acorn for the oak tree, the egg for the red robin, and the love of a mother and father for humanity. The carrot twitched, and ever so slowly eyes within the sphere of snow began to appear and opened for the first time. Santa slanted his head to the side in a curious thinking gaze as he took off his scarf and hat and placed it upon the snowman. Taking a step back, he looked again and smiled. The snowman smiled back. As Santa the father and Mother Nature as the mother, the snowman were all too happy to help Santa build his workshop and all the toys for every child in the world.
Chapter 2 Many years had passed, and children throughout the world had Christmas within their hearts. Santa had delivered toys year after year to the children of the world, and the world was a better place for it. However, there were children who were not happy with Santa's toys alone, and demanded more and more. The parents of many of these children succumbed to their child's wishes and began to buy more and more as each year passed. Each year more and more trees were getting cut down, toy factories could not keep up with the demand, and forests were not being replanted and regrown as Santa did with his magic. Mother Nature watched as the birds Squirrels, deer, bears, and countless more of her children were left homeless and died. Mother Nature once saw humanity as her children, but each year as the destruction for toys carried on, she became more and more furious. Santa understood Mother Nature's anger and tried to make amends by creating the naughty list. Any child who was undeserving would not receive Santa's toys, and the spare magic from making those toys would be given to the forests of the planet to help grow and recover. Mother Nature was happy for a time, until even this did not offset humanity's greed. Humans, now with great machines, powered from the fossils of her most ancient children, began to pollute the air, water, the earth, forests vanished before her eyes and entire species began to die. Mother Nature wept for many years hoping humanity would hear her and stop the pain they were causing. Her cries were drowned out by the drills boring into the planet, the saws biting into the trees, and the roaring of flames in engines. The pain turned to anger, and the anger to fury. Santa was helpless as Mother Nature's suffering began to warp the minds of the snowmen. One by one they stopped working on toys and slowly but surely faded into the distance as they left the workshop behind. Santa eventually found the elves high up in the mountains that were glad to be of help to Santa. However, our story is with the snowmen and not Santa. Chapter 3 John had just gotten home from school. He quickly grew excited as he spotted the snowman outside his bedroom window. John's dad often made him surprises, and he quickly ran out to decorate the snowman. John used his favorite scarf and hat, and found the shiniest rocks he could for the buttons. John was very proud of his decorations, and soon it was time for him to go to bed. Looking out the window, he smiled at the snowman as his eyes slowly began to close. John awoke with a chill in the air and snow on his bed. He opened his eyes to see the window was wide open. Confused and sleepy, he got up and closed the window. As he looked out, however, he noticed the snowman's hat was missing. It must have blown off in the wind, he thought. Upon getting back into bed, he found the hat on top of his covers. He stopped and thought for a moment. His mom must have taken it off and put it there for him. After all, he no longer had a hat to wear for school tomorrow, and it was very cold outside in the mornings. 
The next day, John returned again from school, and a second snowman was right next to the first. He couldn't believe it. His dad had built him a second. He went into the closet and found his box of old worn clothes, hats and scarves too tattered to wear, but sentimental enough to keep. John decorated the second, and again smiled with pride, as it almost seemed like the snowman smiled back at him. A trick of the imagination. And John thought how cool it would be if snowmen really were alive. Chapter 4 The sound of snow filled wind blowing through the room, the screech of an open window hinge as it bangs to and fro. John opens his eyes once again, tiredly shuffling out of bed to close his window. John freezes as his hand reaches for the latch. Only one of the two snowmen are outside his window. Why has someone moved it? John hears a dripping sound coming from his closet. John may only be a child, but he's never been scared of the dark or monsters. He's too clever to believe in fairy tales. So why would monsters be any more real than those? He heads over to the closet, and with a gentle pull, begins to open the door. Chapter 5 John's vision begins to adjust into the darkness from staring at the bright moonlight outside. Nothing. His closet is empty besides a few boxes. The dripping sound continues, though, so he steps inside to try and listen to where it's coming from. As he does so, he hears a loud thud near his still open window. John pokes his head out of the closet, and there in front of the window is the snowman that only a minute ago was standing outside. The snowman is different, lifelike, with sharp, pointed teeth and a hungry grin curling more and more to the sides as it starts to move closer. John is Frozen in fear, he doesn't understand. There is no logical explanation. He slowly backs away, further into the closet. He feels something wet on his head. Drip, drop, drip, drop. As John looks up, the missing snowman is on the ceiling, holding itself up with big, branched arms. John sees the other snowman now in front of the closet, arms reaching. The closet door begins to close, and complete darkness envelops John. Rough knotted branch fingers wrap around John's head, and a gruesome snap and popping sound echoes through the room from that dark closet. John is never seen again. The house is put up for sale shortly after, however with the disappearance of John well known throughout the town. A young boy, who suddenly vanished without a trace from his bed one frosty night, the house remained unsold and empty for many years. Until this night, in fact. Which, my child, is where our story begins. <laughs>
Oh, 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 oh,